What's up guys, it's Cardi. Thank you so much for tuning in. It was last fall when I first discovered the work of this photographer that we are going to get into today. It was through another photographer and fellow YouTube creator, Sean Tucker. Photography heals us. It breaks us out of depression. It takes us out of our comfort zone. Photography is an outlet for our creativity. Today's episode zeroes in on one creator that is making a big mark in the photography world with her emotional self-portraits. Her work moves me, and it'll move you as well. Her humble approach to her work and her absolutely mesmerizing photographs that she creates, they almost don't match. She's so shy, she's modest, and she says she has no idea why we would be interested in hearing what she has to say about photography. I'm here to say it's quite the opposite. Shy people have a gift, the gift of noticing nuance, the gift of creating nuance. In today's episode, we speak to a very special guest about shyness, about putting yourself out there, getting yourself outside your comfort zone and really creating work for yourself first before all else. And of course, we talk about the nuances in her photography. I am so excited to present to you a 30 minute interview with the one and only, the lovely, the amazing, the talented Fiona Lark. I hope you enjoy. Um, so let's talk about photography. Can we talk about a little bit how photography found you or how you found photography? Um, well, um, I've been, uh, hang on. Oh, somebody tell me to un unplug it. Yeah, yeah, you're still good. You're still good. You're still good. We hear you. We hear you. We hear you so fine. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, I started taking photos, I think I was about 10, and, um, and it was a little Instamatic Kodak camera, and, um, and it was just absolutely magic. So I think that's, that's probably when I started, and, um, and I think I've been taking photos pretty much on and off ever since then, so yeah. Um, what would you say, when was the time that you started taking photography seriously? When would you say you started taking photography seriously? I think probably, um, probably just about maybe 10 years ago, because that's when I started posting on Flickr. And, um, and so, so probably not actually that long ago, so probably about 10 years ago. So, um, but yeah, yeah, so it was, it was because that, and that's when I started doing the, yeah, maybe 10, 10 years ago, so, so not that long ago, really. So, did, yeah, yeah. Did, can you talk a little bit about, um, was it an aha moment? Um, can you just raise your camera up just a little bit? Which, there we go. Oh, it's, I see it's just a little bit backlit, so we're a little silly. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, when you decided, was it an aha moment when you decided to be in front of the camera? No, I think, um, do you know, I can't actually remember the actual moment, but I think when I was posting on Flickr, um, you know, I would just post the mountains and the lake. And then when I put me in the picture, just the silhouette of me, it kind of got just a little bit more response and um so yeah i think um i think that you know that's when it all started really it was um but there was i can't remember actually the moment that um you know that, that it started um um so yeah it was just it, i got more response and and I, it, it just it created a little bit more interest i think just having a person in the mountains and um, i mean i could throw my camera up in the air around here and you, you can take a beautiful picture of anywhere but it's just it's capturing the mood and just to have a person in there as well i just think it just adds maybe a little bit more 
more story to the to the shot really so yeah I remember um, during Sean's interview, you said that it was you would post these beautiful landscapes and they wouldn't get they'd get an OK response. But then when you were in the landscape, get all kinds yeah. of attention. Was that part of that process of you realizing like that's what your audience wanted to see? Yeah, I think so. I think you, and, and you, well, like I said, it just it did just add a little bit more interest and um so yeah, and and then it it just it I find it just such a fun it's a fun thing to do because you know you're not looking to the viewfinder, um you know you're just setting it up and then you go in and then you know it it the the photos taken and then you so you 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 kind of um it it is shooting blind because you don't know um you know you don't know what's going to happen so um so yeah it's um. I think that, that that's how it started, really. Yeah. So, um, I love that. Um, how do you how do you reconcile being so shy and putting yourself in front of? How do you reconcile that? Well, I, I, I mean, you can't you can't really see that it's me. On. Is that intentional? Is but that intentional? I think it. It probably is intentional, and it's in, it is it is intentional to have the shadows, and um, so I think I think it it is intentional. I mean, when um, any pictures that I post on Instagram where it's a, you know a bit closer up of me, and you can see me. Um, I I absolutely cringe, and I, I just kind of just want to hide hide behind the sofa for a week, you know. So it's um, it. it yeah, it's it's it probably is intentional, but I I don't want my whole face to be in front of the camera. You know, I think it it I think just showing a little bit, um, you know, if it's just a little bit of light on my nose or on my collarbone or whatever, is just a little bit more interesting than you know showing somebody's whole face. So yeah. It's kind of like the shot you're giving us right now. <laughs> it's almost as if you're a little you're a little backlit. If you rotate like a little bit, um, I think to your left, um, and cut the windows out a little bit, it'll um, it'll uh, oh, try to go the other way. Yeah. All right. I mean, I for me, it's a cool shot. It's a cool shot. It's nice. It's, it's, it's much better if you can't see me. It's, I think. Nice. it's so nice. Fiona, um, how do you prepare yourself mentally for being outside of your comfort zone? How do you prepare? What you mean? Like, like okay. Um, how do you prepare to, like, you go outside of your comfort zone in location, you go outside of your comfort zone in temperature, in weather, in, in being your own subject. Like, is there a mental kind of preparation that you do for this or that you've done in the past in order to get you into the headspace that you are now as a creator? Does that make sense? Um, how do you reconcile, um, how do you prepare yourself for being outside of your comfort zone? That's basically the question. Do you prepare yourself or do you just do it? I just do it. Amazing. There's, there's no, there, there is no preparation at all. Um, I just, um, I'll just pick my camera up and then just, um, and and just and just go. So there's there's no preparation or anything. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, most of the time when I go out with the camera, um, the photos are absolutely rubbish, and um, you know I'll come back with absolutely nothing. Um, but um, but no, there's. There's kind of there's no preparation at all. I mean, I think my best pictures are taken when um, you know, when I'm having a you know it's a hard day or whatever, and I'm having a you know life's not very good, and I just feel like I create a little bit better. And um, I don't know, just um, I, I feel like the best pictures are taken when life isn't maybe going so well. Um, wow. That, no, but it's 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 just wow. it's 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 just my absolute escape. You know, it's my escape from everyday life, and um, it there's no preparation at all. So I just, you know, I I, I 
take the camera and no tripod or anything and it's just um it 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 just gives me space head space just to to think and you know just to to reset and then and come back down so i mean a lot of the time it isn't it isn't even all about the photography so it's um it's just being you know, up on the cells on my own it's the escape and um and it's I mean, I'm probably more of a weather watcher than a photographer. So it's like it's like a type of meditation. I so love I'm up that. there, um, and I'm just standing up there on my own, waiting for the clouds and the mist, and um, and it's just um, it, it, it's just what I love to do. And I just feel so lucky that I found something that. Um, you know, is really good for me mentally and physically and just everything. It's, um, yeah. That's, yeah. it's, um, I love that, Fiona. I, more of a weather watcher. <laughs> I love I, that. I am. I mean, I, I just, um, <laughs> like, if, don't, just don't ask me anything technical about the camera. I've got my camera. I've got my camera here. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I don't, I just, um, I'm not interested at all about the technical stuff it's i love just, that um it's 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 i'm more interested in the weather and the lighting and what's in front of the camera rather than you know what what's um, what's in the camera it's just um we, oh. we work well as a team we work well as a team me and my preach. camera preach fiona i i love i love that and i love that approach and again do you think photography helps us accept ourselves as people and as artists? Do you think photography helps us accept ourselves? Has um, photography helped you accept yourself? I don't know if it's helped me accept myself. I think it's just um, it's been just a very good distraction. Um, I, I I don't know if it goes that deep to um, but I, I don't. I, I just don't know. I, I don't really think about it that much. It's just something that I love to do, um, and I, I just feel so lucky that I found a hobby that um, that I really enjoy. And it, 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 although you know, I mean, so many good things have come from um, the photography, like you know, the Sean Tucker in the Iceland, and just recently the Paris exhibition, and. and selling the pictures as well and so many good things have come from it but it at the end of the day it's just it's a it's a hobby and it it it's just a hobby for me you know it's 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 my it's 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 for my mental health really more than anything so, yeah um is there something i like like we touch on mental health just um bridging that um we touch on mental health and photography a lot here and how um, taking pictures like heals us. Um, do you feel that way? Like, do you feel the, the healing quality um, in photography when you go through the act? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, but it's, it's not just the photography. Like I said, it's, the, it's being on the cells on my own, watching the weather. And then, and then it's the coming back down and the absolute excitement of, you know, getting the pictures onto the iPad and looking through them all. And it's, um, so that whole process, um, I, I just, um, and, and it, 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 it probably is, it, it is a great healer, I think. Yeah. So just talking a little bit about the tech, um, for me personally, I'm not a camera nerd at all. Um, but I did upgrade um, my camera last year from a 5D SR. I had the 50 megapixel 5D, like um, yeah. loved it. Isn't, but it's yeah. video as well. So th last year yeah, yeah. I crossed over to mirrorless. I bought the R5, yeah. and um, yeah. I have to tell you, eye tracking, like wherever the face goes, and it's like literally. I. What are your thoughts? on mirrorless have you shot with a mirrorless camera do you obviously are you no. still shooting with the 5d and um what's your thoughts on 
um new tech i know you don't chase tech at all and i i love that um i know that there there was an, a distinct advantage with me with my photography when i changed over to mirrorless and that it had everything to do with video capabilities as i wanted to do more youtube and also um and also focus like just the tracking is so ha you have you tried mirrorless that's the question yeah no no i haven't um so um i, I just always shoot with my um, my 5d and um i mean I, i've been thinking about um maybe looking at other cameras um just purely because it is just so bloody heavy um so it, it would be nice just to have something just a little bit smaller and lighter but it, it is Fiona Poo. And, um, <laughs> it's rolled and, down a couple and, of hills. <laughs> and it's rolled and it's and it's rolled down a couple of hills and it's um it, I've dropped it. I mean the lens, uh, it's the same lens as well. Um from I I bought it, was it What um, lens do you shoot with? I'm sure people are asking uh, questions. Yeah. Uh, it's a 2405. See, I've even got to look at that. I haven't got a bloody clue. I, I don't know what lens it is. All I know <laughs> is that it, it, it works for me. <laughs> I love that. I mean, the fact that, again, um, like uh, Goblin in chat is asking if you're going back to shoot in the Netherlands um, soon. That's, his, that's a question from chat. Yeah, yeah. The Nether in the I used to going back to the Netherlands. Yeah, I mean, you mean the with the YouTube video? I'm I'm guessing YouTube. that um you made a Netherlands video on YouTube. I'm wondering if Goblin is asking, are you ever going back there to? Yeah, I'm, do... I'm never, I'm never ever ever <laughs> going to do another YouTube video where I because because the whole point of that video was going to going up to strangers and yeah. asking um if I could take their portrait and it was um it was quite painful it really I mean it, because it was completely out of my comfort zone and um you know it, being on my own with it was just a, it was it was a completely different thing but I'm pleased I gave it a go but it was um it 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 was it was really difficult but <laughs> I love the fact that you did that. I love the fact that um, you you do that and put yourself out of your comfort zone. It's something that I tell um, the Cardi crew to do often shoot street portraits, meet strangers. Like, yeah, there is um, there's something that happens when you break that fifth wall of like, hey, you and I always say lead with compliment. Oh, my God, I love your hair. I love your shoes. I love your eyes. You have a uh, like yeah. if you hit someone with a compliment first they're like oh my god and then you're like and because of that i'd love to take your photo and again yeah. it's like that it's a it's an energy exchange that i really appreciate i'm not a street portrait photographer but i do it in order to like keep the pencil sharp um so let's talk a little bit about shooting with what you have um i know that you you seem to be like a one body, one lens, one Fiona, just like that's kind of a, a shooter. And I really love the fact that you're not out all about the tech. You're not about, oh, I need to have the new FM, blah, blah, blah. Like you, it's not about that at all for you. It's about the creation. It's about the content. Can we talk a little bit about your post-production process? Because I learned obviously through Sean's video that you do all of your posts on an iPad and you also often feel like your post-production isn't finished. Like you'll be on, you'll be at a cafe having a coffee and you'll be like, oh, you know what? I want to blah, blah, blah and do a couple of things. Like you're constantly working on your, on your photographs as if they're painting. Can we talk, talk a little bit on that? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, I mean, it's another thing that I just, I just love to do, and I, I love it just as much as take, going up in the south and taking the pictures. I love the the editing part just as much. It's just um, I, I I used to do I, I well I, I did lots of watercolor paintings and things, but um, I I just I've always come back to the photography, 
and it's just I, I just love doing it and I I do like to keep it really really beautiful mm -hmm. and um, I mean I've got um, an iMac at home and it's just going on any computer I just feel it feels like I'm doing work but if I've got my iPad, if I've just got my iPad so if I'm just sitting with my iPad it's just it's just so relaxing you know you can be sitting on the sofa or you know you can be um well just just sitting anywhere and um and you can just do the way on the ipad and it's just um i it, it's just it's just how i like to do it and it, it's just um i just it i just use the simplest of you know whatever i can use it's just um that, that's what i do i love it i love it fiona um Little Emma, we've been talking about Emma. Emma's also from A, you know, a little photography. Yeah, we're, we're going we're we're to meet, we're gonna meet up. Um, that's, I mean, it would make her life. Um, Emma has a question. <laughs> <laughs> she says, how do, how do you get motivated um, to take photos when you're having a bad day? Like you said, most mm -hmm. of the best photography that you do is when shit's not going great and you're in like like how how do you get motivated to to like is it because you know that's the best time for you just through experience yeah. or what yeah. what's the deal it, with that do you know what do you know what as i'm getting older i think um i i i know i i'm real i'm realizing what is good for me and um you know when i was younger and if i was having a bad day well you know i, I just wouldn't do anything but as I'm getting older, I, I do things that are, are good for me, and I know what's good for me. So I think, um, it, you know, I, I know that it's going to make me feel better once I've been out, and um, and it does. I've never regretted going out upon the cells with my camera, you know, in, in all weather, preferably when it's absolutely pissing down and misty. Um, you know, that's um, that, that's that's. Um, I just know that it's going to make me feel better. And it always, always does. Amazing. Amazing. So where do your ideas come from? This is something that's quite profound. But um, where, where do your ideas come from? Have you ever thought about that? Like, where do they come from? Yeah. I don't, do you know, I, I just don't know. I think I, think I am so lucky to live um, to live where I do. I don't, if I lived anywhere else, um, I don't quite know what kind of photography I would do. But, um, but I, I just, I don't know where the ideas come from. And I, 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 I'm, I'm just lucky that I've got the cells as the background and the mist and everything. You know, and it's just, um, I, I'm just lucky. I'm, I'm lucky to have that. And, um, and I, I don't know where the ideas come from. I've got no idea. <laughs> this is beautiful. Um, I photographed a, a jazz singer, and um, she was older. She, uh, her name was Abby Lincoln, and um, I was photographing her while she was performing. And after I'd taken the photos, um, I, I ran up to her. I showed her the picture. I said, "Abby, you're so talented." And she's like, "Not me. That's talented. I'm just lucky because I can tap in to the creativity. The creativity." Is just a stream above us. The lucky ones get to tap into it. As soon as I say that it's me, that the creativity is coming from, it eludes you. It eludes you. So I really, really love that that thought, that creativity not coming from us. It's like coming through us. And that's kind of um, what I kind of talk about when it comes to my own personal creativity. Um, can you talk about nuance? Um, and nuance in photography, how important is nuance um, for you? What do you mean? <laughs> nuance, um, let's say the tiny details, the light, the way that your hair is wisping on the side, the wind, the mist, um, selective focus. You're focusing on a fence post in the foreground. You're out of focus in the background. You're um, out of focus very much in the foreground, in the focus in the background. Um, your relationship with horses, like all of these things for me are nuance. And those subtleties are for me, Fiona, what makes your work so magic. So I want to talk about nuance. Do you 
No, how how are you with um how do you feel about the nuance in your biography? I I think it, I mean it's it's everything it's everything so um I mean I can take 100 pictures and the only the the one that stands out might be the one where you know like a bit of hair blowing up or um a little bit of light has hit me just there or you know so it um, it's it's the ti tiny, tiny little details that can make the biggest difference to a picture. Um, so it's um, it, it, it it it's just it's everything. It's just absolutely everything, and it's just it is absolute luck. It's luck, you know. I mean, I don't know when I when I press press the button and run, and ten seconds later, I don't know if the wind's going to blow. Or if the light, you know, is going to catch me a certain way. So that that's the excitement about the editing part. You know, when I when I turn them to black and white, and then I mean, I can usually see from the colour um, picture if it's going to be any good or not. But when I turn it to black and white, and the magic happens, you know, it, it the the contrast with the mist and all that, and and just the, the you know, and it. it it, so it's it's the tiny tiny little details. So it can be a hundred pictures, and then just that one picture where um, the little bit of light hit me, or caught a bit of hair or something, can just make all that massive difference, and can make a really boring picture just a little bit more interesting. So yeah, it just it just means everything. Nuance, I honestly believe, is everything. I I love it. Um. Where does your mind go when you take a self-portrait? Do you go someplace? Um, Do you, you go know, someplace? You know, you know what? It's, it's, I think it's the only time that my mind actually stops. Um, you know, like, I, I mean, every, all the time, there's a hundred million things going through my mind constantly. You're thinking about yesterday. You're thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. You're worrying about this, that, and the other. But when I'm doing photography, I am... So in that actual moment that I just don't get from anywhere else, you know, so the knocking is going through my mind and I'm actually in that moment. And when I'm editing as well, that's when I'm actually in the moment. So I'm not, I mean, if I'm, if I'm listening to music when I'm editing, I'm just completely distracted and, you know, I think it's a good picture and it, it, it'll turn out to be absolutely rubbish because I've been completely distracted by the music. So Interesting. It's, I've got to have absolute silence, and I mean, when I when I'm up on the cells, um, so I'm so in the moment and in that actual moment. And if um, so, if I see somebody like on a cell, it can be like thirty miles away on another cell. It completely puts me off, and you know, I just kind of give up and I don't want to do it anymore because it's it's just broken that moment. So I, yeah, in with photography, it just, it absolutely just um, captures me in that moment that I just don't get anywhere else. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I, I, beautiful. Um, black and white or color? Um, black and white or color? I, I've noticed um, in, I, I've noticed you touch on color sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, in my, in my stories, um, I, I always put the color. Um, but I, you know, I, I just find I find color really difficult. Um, I just um, I, I find it difficult to get it just right. Um, it's um, it, it's just a complete. I, I just find black and white just um, colors just a little bit too distracting, and there's just too much going on. Whereas black and white, it just keeps it simple straight to the point and um and it it just gives a little bit more mood and i've always loved black and white always amazing amazing so um shooting for yourself versus shooting for an audience um do you think um about you have to shoot for yourself i believe but in this world of social media like I feel like social media is like the worst thing to happen to photography, um, but also the best thing. <laughs> so it's it's an interesting thing. Um, what do you think about 
shooting for yourself? Um, do you shoot for yourself or do you shoot for an audience? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's um, it's a difficult one. Um, if I didn't if I didn't post my photos on social media, I would still be shooting exactly the same. So um, I don't know. It's it it's for me, and when I post this on Instagram and it gets a reaction, well, that is such a fantastic bonus. Um, and then if it if I sell if people buy the print, that is an even more fantastic bonus. Um, so it starts off just for me, and then if anything else comes of it, that is just just absolutely mind blowingly brilliant. So, um, but it it it's absolutely just just for me, and um, yeah, yeah. Guys. Was that interview not amazing? Fiona is so sweet. She's so shy. She's so honest, truthful. Fiona actually hung out with us for another 30 minutes and reviewed self-portraits from my viewers on Behind the Picture. So if you want to see that, I'm going to be making a clip of that. That'll be up on YouTube very soon. But you can watch that right now if you go to the full episode 27 where we're featuring Fiona Lark. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm Cardi. We do live streams here on YouTube every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We do Ask a Photo Pro. If you're a fan of Twitch, you can follow me over there. I do Ask a Photo Pro on Twitch on Thursdays and I do Behind the Picture Sundays. All my shows are always at 2 p.m. Eastern time. I'm Cardi. You'll see me here again. I love you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.